My name is Anupa. I'm an avid water woman, recreational fisher, and an ocean advocate. I learned how to fish from my dad, and I think my dad has taught most of my family how to fish, along with um, people in the town that I grew up in, young and old. I grew up fishing the Gulf Coast, like the flats of, of Florida, for something called red drum and speckled trout. Um, and now I am learning how to be a surf fisher, which has been really challenging and exciting. So surf fishing is basically fishing from shore, from the beach, and casting out into the surf. So there are breaking waves and, you know, the depth of the water is always changing based on what, you know, if it's a set wave coming in or how high the surf is. I think the thing that is the most different is, you know, when you're fishing from a boat, you kind of know where your line's going to go or if you're drifting or not. But fishing from shore, like within a single cast, it's way more dynamic and the conditions are changing. So I think it's really been a test of my skills or lack thereof. I always struggle when I do catch a fish. It's like this feeling of victory, like you figured it out and you did it and you won a battle. But at the same time, um, I do have this respect for the environment and you have this mixed feeling of gratitude as well for this fish giving itself to you <laughs> to sustain you and give you a meal. I don't keep everything I catch. If you know I haven't had fish for a while, I might keep something. Um, if it's lobster season and I go for a lobster dive, I'll, I'll keep a few. It's kind of funny though because I, the first comment I usually get when I get out of the water, especially usually go at night for lobster diving is like, wow, I've never seen a girl here before. Um, and then, you know, they'll always say, oh, we got our limit, we got all seven, and I'll just come out with, you know, one or two. Sometimes I only found one or two, but often I do see a lot more and I choose not to take as many as I can because I feel fine letting them stay in the ocean. I only need to take what I, what I can eat. We have areas that are restricted and areas that we can't fish or take things from. Um, it actually benefits the overall health of our ocean and what we're able to catch elsewhere. So a lot of fishers, I think, are supportive of having rain-protected areas and having these places where the ocean can heal and recover and replenish. The U.S. federal government and the state of California have both committed to protecting 30% of land and 30% of coastal waters by the year 2030. This is a goal we commonly refer to as 30 by 30. And reaching this minimum target of 30 by 30 will help maintain global biodiversity and defend against the climate crisis by preserving the integrity of ecosystems that are so essential to sustaining us on this planet into the future. Not all marine protected areas are created equal. Some are just declared marine protected areas and there is very little enforcement and people kind of ignore the rules. Um, we often call those paper parks. Some protected areas like our state marine reserves in California are fully protected, meaning you can't take anything from these places. They, we would call them like an insurance policy for the rest of the ocean. In California, um, our Fish and Game, our State Fish and Game Commission has the authority to designate MPAs, but anytime an MPA or our current, even with our current MPA network, um, it's always done through public process. So everyone has a say in it, um, from where it goes to how big it is to um, what you can and can't do there. All of these are opportunities for the public to have a say in, in our marine protected area process and network.
equitable access for fishing and, and people who rely on the ocean for sustenance, I think, involves including indigenous communities. For other folks, it can involve, you know, reinforcing peers, making sure that they can uh, withstand through sea level rise and a lot of the other changes that we're experiencing along our coastline. And just by having healthier ocean ecosystems overall, more folks, particularly those that fish from shore and don't have access to boats, um, have access to a healthier ocean environment that's more productive. When we think of equitable access, most people think of just being able to get to the beach. But getting there, you should also feel like you're welcome there, that you're safe there. It's a clean, <laughs> healthy environment. At Dockweiler Beach, which is a coastal area that you often see more people of color visiting, um, it's also right where a sewage treatment plant is and there is an outflow. Um, we had a big sewage spill last summer and a lot of folks got sick because they weren't given the information to know that that water wasn't clean and safe for them to be in in that moment. Getting in the water in a marine protected area, it's immediately obvious that you're in a protected place. I mean, fish are big, there's such a great balance of different um, of the, you know, the ecosystem, the kelp is usually healthy. I see more kelp, I see more seagrass. Um, I remember the last time I snorkeled at Point Doom, the lobsters were just sitting in the surf grass looking at me, <laughs> knowing that they were safe and happy. Even the fish that aren't that cool that you sort of ignore elsewhere, you get into a marine protected area and you're like, oh my gosh, they're huge. <laughs> and they're everywhere. And you feel like you're more immersed in it, right? Like things aren't running away from you. I would love to have a network of marine protected areas, I mean, across the world, um, but at least across the United States that's representative of different ecosystems and different habitats and for it to be accessible, equitably accessible to everyone. If you're an ocean person and you have had opportunities to get to the ocean and learn water skills, you know, pass that on to someone who may not have had that opportunity growing up. I think most people that I know that experience the ocean have had someone, for me it was my dad, but you know, learning other skills, I've had other people in my life that have brought me into that world or brought me into a community. So I think that's really important to be able to do. A lot of people put aside the fact that you have a stake in the ocean. We are all ocean stakeholders. The ocean impacts every single person on this planet, whether you live on the coast, whether you surf or play or go to the beach regularly, or you live miles and miles inland. Through science, policy, indigenous knowledge, we have all the tools to create a better future for our planet and ourselves, but we really have to act. Your connection to the places where you live and play, recharge or find peace in nature are an important part of that toolkit. You have a say in where and how areas are protected. So get involved, get engaged and share those stories. The vision for a healthy planet must come from all of us.